about FOSBOT, uh, free, uh, open source, uh, and open design uh, robot that uh, we developed with uh, my uh, students at the university, at Harokopian University, Christos Chronis and Eleftheria Papagiorgiou, uh, but uh, also uh, a few more students that uh, joined in, uh, in the in the process uh, so we're still uh, gathering students that are willing to contribute and uh, we already have some first results that uh, i will show you later on in this presentation that come from these students which uh, who, who are uh, very eagerly uh, want to to contribute to the project and also we have students that come from my university and also from other universities such as the national technical university of Athens. In this, uh, in this um, effort, we had the support of uh, the Greek uh, community of free and open source uh, software, GFOS, as you said, uh, or uh, Open Technologies Association, as is its new name. Um, and um, uh, their support is uh, both in terms of organization, but also in terms of uh, resources, because they have already uh, supported us, uh, our students, uh, to, to develop uh, the robot code and also um, uh, provided us with the materials, the electronics and everything that we needed in order to, to print and uh, assemble the robot. And these are the students that uh, work so far in, in this robot, uh, some of them in the, in the assembly of the robots and others in the, in the programming. And this is uh, this is Fosbot. This is the robot that we have developed, and uh, I will talk about it uh, in the next uh, few minutes. So, the project is actually uh, based on open design and open software. So, our idea was to make all the designs uh, ready for three D printing available on GitHub. Uh, also, make all the code available on GitHub, and develop something that would be, from one side, expandable, so that we can add more and functionalities and uh, more um, abilities in the robot uh, and this is something that is very interesting with this robot and the other thing is uh, to make it uh, a bit let's say protected in the inside on the inside in order to be able to be used uh, to be easy to be used by uh, students of all ages even uh, from nursery schools or primary and secondary schools and um, the idea uh, also was to develop a low-cost solution that uh, anyone can um, afford uh, buying uh, the electronics and uh, doing all the uh, necessary effort to assemble and, and work. With the help of um, the open source um, society, the Greek open source society, we are now in the process of uh, developing uh, 100 robots and assembling 100 robots and uh, sending them to selected schools uh, in the country that have applied uh, uh, to participate in a, in a, in a course uh, of, for educators and then to use it um, in their um, schools for their students. So the robot, uh, as you see here, um, um, it's, um, let's say, compact. It's not modular, more or less. It has the main body and also has a lid where we can uh, gain access to the inside of the robot and everything is inside. Um, we have already developed uh, the hardware designs, the software, and also with the help of uh, some educators from uh, the Greek uh, free open source community, we have developed educational activities at uh, the different levels as courses in, uh, in Moodle. And we have everything, uh, or at least everything that is uh, ready and ready to be presented, uh, available on GitHub, and we keep updating the project with new uh, information. So let's start with an overview of the robot to see the technical part. So as you can see here, the robot has in the front uh, surface, has an RGB LED, uh, has two ultrasonic sensors, also for, for kind of design, but also for, for using it in the different activities. It has a photoresistor and uh, all, all, the, all the parts of the main body are 3D printable, uh, except from the wheels, which are uh, assembled to the main robot. Um, then, uh, we, if we look at the at the bottom side, we can see that it has three infrared uh, obstacle sensors, which are used uh, for designing line following experiments and other activities that uh, have to do with the sensing of the robot on what is underneath it, what is the, the surface it is moving. 
Then we have um, two, 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 two motors that um, uh, uh, give the motion to, to the wheels. The two motors are also assembled with odometers that allow us to measure the distance uh, covered uh, by each wheel and also allow us to align the robot and make it go straight uh, through um, proper configuration. So um, the third, uh, let's say, wheel that uh, we use in order to, to, to provide stability, let's say, in the robot is a small, um, um, is a small wheel, not actually wheel, it's a, a small um, ball in the back uh, side of the robot that uh, gives him gives strict uh, stability. Then on the back side, you can see a place for the speakers. Uh, we also have a switch on and off button. And what is interesting is that uh, we have a circuit for um, charging the robot. Uh, so it is uh, it, it ports uh, rechargeable batteries, but also it is quite easy to plug it in and charge it using uh, this uh, charging port. Then if we look at the top side of the robot, uh, we can see the top lid, which uh, can open easily and give us access to the inside of the robot. Uh, it has uh, um, engraved, let's say, a, a, a base where we can put a Lego base and then uh, Lego bricks on top in case we want to, uh, to create activities that uh, use additional Lego bricks. Uh, we can also uh, attach a marker in this uh, special market hole that goes from top to bottom. So we can attach a marker uh, to the robot and we can draw things uh, as the robot moves around the space. And then uh, it has a pulling component uh, on the on the back side for towing items, large items by tying them uh, on this uh, pulling component. So these are, let's say, more or less the, the, the mechanical or let's say the printable parts of the robot, but uh, the hardware of the robot. So now let's move to the software. Uh, without uh, getting into much details, I will say that uh, the whole um, let's say stack of the robot is uh, developed on uh, using Python, uh, but uh, in order to make it accessible to different um, um, uh, levels, uh, different age levels, uh, different uh, types of uh, students, we have developed three different interfaces. So the main interface is actually on the web. So it's uh, when, when you turn on the robot, you can connect to it via Wi-Fi. Uh, so it has a Wi-Fi access point. So you can connect to it through a tablet or a mobile phone or a laptop uh, using Wi-Fi. And then you can open a browser where you, you get access to the main uh, page of the robot. So if we choose to use it in a uh, kindergarten mode, as we call it, for smaller children, then uh, the, um, the the robot uh, switches on uh, a friendly UI with a few buttons. Uh, the buttons um, actually allow to move the robot uh, towards the four basic dimensions, uh, front, backwards, left and right, to turn left and turn right. And um, it has an additional button where you can start programming it, let's say, by clicking uh, several buttons uh, multiple times and then executing the program that you have written with the buttons. So it's uh, quite uh, easy and uh, user-friendly to, 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 to program it in the kindergarten mode. Uh, what we have done there is that we give the ability to educators that are more uh, convenient with uh, FOSBOT to program their own scripts using all the other facilities that all the other, let's say, functionalities that we have and associate these scripts with uh, new buttons so they can extend the, the set of buttons or basic buttons with additional buttons that the juniors can uh, click and uh, see the results. Then we have a second version for the elementary schools, uh, uh, which um, um, follows, uh, let's say, the paradigm of Scratch of no-code programming. Where for this purpose, we use uh, Blockly, which is the platform provided by Google. Uh, it's similar to Blockly, actually, to, to Scratch, actually. But uh, what we have done here is that we have programmed our robot uh, and uh, the Blockly blocks to operate with the robot. And then um, we have the, the, the version for high schools or universities or whoever uh, feels uh, quite advanced on uh, writing code, uh, which allows uh, people to program the robot using uh, Jupyter notebooks and also uh, add um, 
apart from code, um, add text or images that uh, provide more details about the code that is written. And this can be used also by high school students that have, um, let's say, basic knowledge on uh, programming Python. This is something that is already implemented, but it's not uh, directly accessible now uh, through the main um, interface. So these are, let's say, the screenshots of the three interfaces. So this is the main page for the kindergarten mode, the symbol mode where someone can operate the mode, the robot through this um, screen. We also have added uh, a button here that allows you to uh, record a set of actions and replay it uh, after that. This is the main screen for, uh, let's say, the operation uh, from the teacher. So that the, or, or the students of uh, middle age, let's say, that can use the robot uh, using uh, Blockly. So here, anyone that has access to this can switch to manual operation or can keep uh, writing uh, his or her own programs and executing them. So we can create a new project, a new script. We can edit a previous script or we can execute script. And we can also ex export these scripts and um, move them to another FOSBOT or uh, to another Blockly uh, environment. And of course, we can execute a script and we can stop the script at any time using this button. So moving a bit forward, this is the way Blockly looks like. As you can see, we have custom types of blocks. These are the main blocks categor block categories that are available on, on um, on Scratch and uh, in our case, but we have extended it with some blocks that are related to the sensor that uh, Fosbot uh, contains. And here you can see a script that is composed uh, block by block and can be executed or stopped <clears throat> at any time during um, editing, or we can save changes and come back, go back to the to the main page. Here are the, the way that the blockly blocks look like. We can put specific blocks inside other blocks, we can change the parameters, and we can develop our own scripts. And this is how the, how, let's say, the, the most advanced uh, mode of uh, robot uh, programming uh, works. This is the Jupyter Notebooks that uh, we can use to train our students' programming, but also other um, sciences, for example, physics. This is an application on physics, where we use the robot in order to demonstrate uh, uh, things about physics and mathematics. So let's uh, uh, go to some videos that demonstrate the use of a false board in action. So here is the line following example. So we have a script that uh, reads the, the three sensors, uh, the three sensors that are below the, that underneath the, the robot uh, and uh, checks whether these uh, three sensors are actually checking a line or not. It plays some sounds in the beginning, it plays some sounds when an obstacle is found, and some uh, sound uh, uh, when it stops. So here are the videos. Let me... Okay, I'll, I'll leave them both to play. You see two different line following examples using the previous code. So it's a few blocks in Blockly. And here the robot stops because it finds an obstacle or the, the arm of the demonstrator, which is considered as an obstacle. When the obstacle is removed, removed the, 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 the force bot keeps doing the, the loop that it has. One more thing that is interesting with the uh, robot and also actually helps us to, to distribute it uh, and demonstrate it in more environments uh, is that we have developed, we have recently developed a simulation environment um, we have ported all the uh, concept of the robot, all the mechanics of the robot inside a, a simulator, a simulator for robots, which is called Copeliasim. And as you see here, we have already helped the educators to create uh, different activities by changing, for example, the, the, the surface, the, the floor surface, and uh, designing something that makes more sense with uh, squares and numbers and snakes and ladders, or we use obstacles like this ball or these uh, uh, markers here that um, make the, the robot follow the path, the, in, the designated path uh, by avoiding obstacles uh, or uh, in some cases by 
uh, hitting them and pushing them uh, further. So we can put a lot of different mechanics in the world that uh, allow us to program the robot to, to use these mechanics and uh, implement different uh, educational activities. Okay, so this is the same thing, but inside the simulator. So this is the line following that we developed uh, with the real robot that uh, is executed here in the simulation environment. This is a good thing because with a simulator, uh, someone that does not have the ability to print or assemble the robot can work on the simulator. And when he is ready or she is ready, they can um, uh, proceed with uh, uh, building the, the actual robot or we can give them a uh, access to the actual robot and they can test their scripts directly without need to change uh, anything. Okay, so we don't need a physical robot this, in this way. Uh, this is a cross-platform installation, so we can install everything uh, in any type of operating system and it's fully compatible with the real uh, robot. Uh, and we, of course, we can change the environment. We can change the obstacles, the lines, the market, the, the surface and so on. So um, this is, let's say my last slide. I would like to give you the, the QR code uh, to the GitHub project uh, of um, the Greek uh, free open source uh, software community and FOSBOT more specifically, and ask you to contribute either as uh, developers, as electronic design, electronics, let's say, experts, or of course, as educators, which is the most important pa part at this moment, uh, since we are trying uh, with our educa educators to develop um, courses for all the different um, age groups. And that's all from my side and from FOSBOT. So thank you for attending my presentation. Thank you, Reckless. It, it was welcome. great. It was great to see you. Very, very interesting how to make an absolutely open design uh, robot technology in just into the classrooms. Two questions come across during your presentation, mm -hmm. and we have three minutes to uh, to give you a response. Okay. So I would like to pose both questions, and it's up to you. Um, how do you split your time? Uh, the one first question is, did you design supporting materials for using robot in education, for instance, for teachers, uh, mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. The second is, was the feedback from the teachers? Do they mm -hmm. require additional training, another intervention, for example, in using new, new software solutions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I will go brief to your questions and answer one by one. So concerning the, the supporting materials, we have already a team of educators that is designing activities and uh, material for uh, teaching, uh, uh, let's say, math in uh, um, elementary school um, uh, students and also in high school students uh, and physics, and also for performing some basic activities with um, um, students, with younger students. So yes, the answer is yes, they have already created some activities and some material both in the um, simulator environment and also in in the real robot because as i told you they work uh, both ways and then concerning the second questions that uh, is about uh, the need for additional training mm -hmm. it's necessary that they need actually the first experience that we have with this with educators is that they see they are getting impressed but they they have some technicalities to solve but mm -hmm. uh, actually these technicalities are solved let's say in a, in one day and then uh, from day two let's say they are re ready to start programming the robot so uh, and what is even more interesting is that they come with more ideas on activities that uh, they can perform um, with the robot so this is something that is uh, quite promising okay and these supporting materials are available for example in uh, due to these yes yes years? actually actually now they are developing the materials in uh, in greek because we're targeting greek uh, schools as i told you before okay. but soon uh, they will be in english uh, what we also did is we translated everything in uh, in uh, the, the ui of possible in english so that it can be available from anyone so if you go to to the page of uh, possible in github you can find all the information there